Hey, Bruce Kittle here with Emma Kittle. We are uh, on location in Cozumel, Mexico. Uh, this was day one with Diving with Heroes, and we are very excited. We had two great dives a day, and then finished our Nitrox training tonight, so we're all ready to go. Um, we have another candidate for our interview, so one of our Diving with Heroes. Very glad to welcome Ethan. So, uh, Ethan, as we're getting going, maybe um, just uh, give us a little uh, short bio, just kind of... Uh, who, is, who are you, and uh, and then lead us up to kind of uh, your your days up until your transition into the military. Okay. So my name is Ethan Hughes. Uh, I came in the Army, I enlisted in 1993. I graduated in 1994. Uh, it was a very good benefit for me to actually get into late entry program because it was a troubled area where I grew up. Uh, from there, you know, saying it got me the ability to get out of where I was. So I transitioned into the service and it, okay. It, Let me just. Where where was this located? Uh, it is actually Indianapolis, Indiana. Okay, that's all right. Yeah. So you grew up there, then high school. So you enrolled before you graduated high school. Correct. Okay, gotcha. All right. Yeah. Fire. And, all right. And then from there, you know, saying it was it was a short period of time before I went in for, for, for graduation, and I got in a bad incident. You know, saying the military kept me from. You know, saying going down the wrong path. Okay. Uh, I had the ability to stay in for a long time. I was in about 21 years, 11 months. Uh, if I wouldn't have done that, you know, saying I probably would have gone the wrong path in those neighborhoods that I grew up. Okay. And so those 21 years plus, uh, can you tell us a little bit then about kind of where'd you start and how did your career grow and what did you end up doing for your years of service? So when I first went in, I tried to go into exactly what my father and my grandfather did. Uh, my father was in Vietnam, my grandfather was in World War II, and then they were airborne. So I wanted to go airborne infantry. Right. So I went to the 82nd Airborne first. Uh, from there, I, I stayed initially three years, and then I transitioned into use of KPOC, which and I did civil affairs. Uh, I transitioned uh, from the active component into the reserve component. And from there, I kept gradually getting promoted, became a senior non-commissioned officer as a seven. And then the global war on terrorism started hitting me with multiple deployments. 2006, seven, and eight, I was deployed for Operation Iraqi Freedom. I was home for a year, and in 2010, 11, I was deployed to Afghanistan uh, for Operation Enduring Freedom. Okay, and then, so when you say reserves, are you still, is that the former branch of the military, or is that so, more National Guard type thing? Well, the National Guard is state, and I was Army Reserve, which is still federal, federal okay. but it wasn't full-time. Got it. Uh, I transitioned, I, I got out of the active component and wanted to go get my degrees. Well, right when I got out, you know, saying the global war on terrorism had Gosh. basically started, I was lucky enough to finish my bachelor's and my master's degree, and then I, that's I transition into those deployments I just spoke about. Okay. Uh, at the, I get back from 2011, and I'm thinking, well, my career's going well. I had been promoted to master sergeant, and then I made sergeant major in 2012. Okay. And I think I know because we've interviewed a few master sergeants, but yeah. so just tell us a little bit then about as a master sergeant what your duties are and what you do. Okay. So as a master sergeant, those were my two deployments at that rank. I just got promoted before I went to Operation Iraqi Freedom from E7 to E8, which is a master sergeant. But then when I got back, I got promoted to Command Sergeant Major in 2012. Okay. Uh, then at that point, I was actually stationed at Camp Atterbury, Indiana, and I was getting ready to transition out of the service by that time. Okay. So my plans were is to work for the federal government. I first started working for the state of Indiana, found the job that I wanted for the federal government, and then I started work for a defense finance and accounting service, progressed up through HR, and then I moved over to the VA. And I worked for the Veterans Health Administration, and then I transitioned to the Veterans Benefit Administration. Okay, so that transition for you, so a lot of the veterans that we talk to talk about a little difficulty with that transition, or just, it's different, because now instead of wearing a uniform every day, or even in the reserve, you still have a lot of obligations. What, what kind of difficulties or struggles did you face in that transition going to completely civilian? So how, on the Army Reserve side, the transition is not very good. The active component still has difficulties from the military service to ci civilian career. So the Army Reserves doesn't put forth the effort. So you really have to do a lot yourself. So I thought, well, I need to learn more about the VA and I eventually worked for the VA as a civilian. Because right. I needed my service connected 
you know, saying problems that I had to be annotated properly, to be certified, so I could get connected with service-connected injuries. Okay. And I had quite a few of them. So it was a long, drawn-out process, very stressful, very, uh, you get very irritated, very emotional about it. And I said, well, uh, at this time, I think I'm going to retire. And I retired from my civilian job. They medically retired me because of my military service injuries. And from there, I transitioned in to looking about finding organizations like Dive with Heroes. And Diving with Heroes is something that connects to me because I was a scuba diver since 1996. My injuries happened over many decades with a lot of time in service. So when I, I started looking for places and organizations, I said scuba diving is what I want to do. That's what I love. It's been a part of me before I was injured. Now I'm injured and getting older. I wanted something to rejuvenate myself and I reached out to them. 2017, I went to Little Cayman with them and I've had a connection with the organization ever since. Okay, so it must, because you're back and you've done a couple other trips. So uh, what is it about diving with heroes and specifically going scuba diving? So part of it is the scuba diving obviously, but then there's another part where you are, um, kind of, uh, you have the ability to kind of commingle and be around other veterans and share some of that. So tell us a little bit about what, what are the things about diving with heroes and these experiences that draw you back? Well, the first thing is, is the, you know, saying you have the camaraderie and the, you know, saying the connectivity that you had in the military. Most individuals that are here besides individuals that volunteer their time or instruct have been in the service. So you, you usually connect really fast with them. You have the ability to talk about commonality and situations that you've done in the past where you feel comfortable with. You make friends very easily, and every year there's different and new people, so it's good to come back. My thing is, is I feel this is a very therapeutic thing because they're hyperbaric chambers, and hyperbaric chambers are a confined area that a lot of us with PTSD and, and different other injuries don't like to be confined in a small space. So the ocean is God's hyperbaric chamber. We have the pressure, the buoyancy, the ability to have less pain, you know, saying enjoy ourselves by visual stimulation down at the coral, and saying you have the ability to see fish, you know, mammals, everything inside the ocean, and, and just have a really good time, you know, saying uh, taking in what's, what's beautiful out there across the world. Okay, so clearly uh, being underwater, being underwater, uh, in the scuba helps physically, obviously then with the physical kind of release of pain, yeah. there's kind of emotional cognitive relief as well. Oh yeah, For, so first of all, pain is something you can never usually relax very well. When you find the ability to find something that you know, is treating you, and that's what you come here, you know, saying it brings your spirits up, it has, you know, saying your, your natural body puts out, you know, saying, you know, saying endorphins, if you want to say, yeah. that, that makes you feel better, happier, and it combats some of the problems that you're, you're facing and you've seen in the past. Okay. All right. And if there's a vet out there that's never scuba dived and they're a little reluctant about being underwater 40 feet, just hooked up to an air tank, and what would you tell them about diving with heroes and or scuba diving that you would encourage them? Well, the first thing... The first thing I would say is that with Diving with Heroes, you have brothers and sisters that, you know, saying that you can trust, just like when you're in a service. Uh, you'll form friendships and, you know, saying have the ability to go out and have fun. So I think emotionally, you know, saying some people have those hidden injuries that you don't know. And I have seen people come to this and that are very quiet at the start, you know, saying very, you know, back away from everybody and then by the first couple of dives, they're enjoying their self. They're getting back to being who they are and what they should be. Yeah. You know, saying instead of uh, dealing with some of those those demons that you have to deal with. Yeah, water kind of washes it away. You're right. A little bit, kind of at least eases it for a while. Yes. Okay. All right. Anything else about diving with heroes or scuba diving that, if I knew more, I should have asked? Well, one thing about diving with heroes is you have a you have a great organization that tries to get people to come together and you know saying you'll have a fun time if you want to come to this experience you'll you'll enjoy yourself i couldn't imagine that i've never seen anybody not enjoy themselves okay. and that's very hard to say about anything and, and i can tell you physically and mentally it can actually it, it's a treatment 
Yeah. It actually is a treatment and Diving with Heroes will help you get certifications. They'll help you enjoy it more. They'll help you understand it more and, you know, same build you as a diver. Okay. And last question. Uh, if there's a potential donor out there who wants to support something that's supporting veterans, um, what would you tell them about wh why should they donate to Diving with Heroes? And I know you've said a lot, but is there anything else that might convince somebody to make that donation? <clears throat> well, I would say that if you, if you're looking for an organization to donate to, come and experience it yourself. Hands-on experience, seeing how we are and how people from the start to beginning uh, from a trip, and you'll you'll know that it's uh, not like I said therapeutic. It, it's it's emotional stimulant, and, and it actually makes people want to uh, do something fun, have a hobby, have enjoyment. And a lot of veterans, you know, saying don't have that. So if you want to die, you want to donate to a diving organization or any organization, always find something that makes people feel better. Okay. And for you, diving with heroes. Exactly. Diving okay. with heroes is it. All right. I think we're good. That was great. Well done. No, thanks. Thanks, man. That was really good.